This is the Tesla Model X crossover. Because of its unusual doors, Tesla calls it a sport utility vehicle with falcon wing doors. I call it a minivan with pigeon wing doors. Now, I've borrowed this vehicle using a service called Turo, which is this company that lets you rent other people's cars instead of the usual boring rental cars. Turo gave me a budget to rent cars, and I'm using that budget to review cars that manufacturers otherwise probably wouldn't let me drive. And Tesla surely wouldn't give me a car. After all, I once wrote that the Model S isn't cool anymore. I've argued with their sales proclamations. And I've tweeted many times about how fed up I am with the vanity plates. The constant freaking vanity plates. So why do I hate Tesla? Simple, because I'm a red-blooded car enthusiast who loves cars, and Tesla is a stupid tech company whose awful cars don't even make any noise. Now, in my next video, which should go up later this week, I'm gonna show you all of the strange quirks and weird traits and unusual features about this car that you probably wouldn't know unless you've spent some serious time with one. But today, I'm going to end all the hype about this Thing, and I'm going to show you exactly why the Pigeon Wing minivan is actually an awful car. Now, I can't personally come up with enough complaints about this thing, so today I've turned to the best sources on the internet, WordPress blogs and YouTube comments, in order to find all of the greatest complaints that car enthusiasts have about this car. And today I'm going to demonstrate why they're all completely correct. Now, as everyone knows, the Model X's rear doors open upwards like a pigeon trying to take flight in Times Square in order to eat a cheese puff. But you know what they don't do? Open up in a low parking garage like this one, as I shall now demonstrate. Darn it! Okay, fine, the doors can open in a low parking garage. They'd better be able to. But the biggest problem with the Pigeon Wing minivan's Pigeon Wings is that they won't open if you're parked tight and close next to someone. Allow me to demonstrate. I can easily get into this random individual's unlocked car. Takes a little work, but I'm in. No problem. But the Pigeon Wing minivan's Pigeon Wings are so big and bulky, there's no way they open in this tiny little space. Darn it! Okay, here is a good complaint. The giant screen that everybody talks about in the middle of the dashboard, it freezes all the time. Allow me to demonstrate. One second. Darn it. Well, I, I, I bet it'll freeze tomorrow. Okay, here's a great complaint. Tesla's autopilot system is glitchy. Now, we all know Tesla has had a few problems with their autopilot system, and that's because it is not production ready. It shouldn't be in a production car, open and available to members of the public. And today, I'm going to show you just how bad it is. I've rigged up a little test. I have my friend Filippo in the driver's seat of the Model X with autopilot engaged. Now, it isn't going to sense me. It's going to hit me. It's going to injure me and then I'm going to sue Tesla because the pigeon wing minivan is terrible. Here goes. Darn it! Here's another problem with the pigeon wing minivan. It is not at all practical. I mean, look at that stupid, sleek, coupe-like design. You can't get anything back there. Now, my friend Filippo here, he feels differently. He thinks it's actually a relatively practical vehicle. But I, I know better. 
So we've created a little challenge here. In order to find out if the pigeon wing minivan is actually practical, Filippo is going to try to stick a few items inside of it. Now, what do we have? We've got four rather large winter tires. We've got these two odd silver things that we just bought at Home Depot. We have a woman's bathroom sign. We have a couple of boxes of light bulbs. And we have one of those drive like your kids live here signs. Now, if that is not regular everyday groceries that you would put in the back of your car, I don't know what is. And so, Filippo, if you think you can get these items in back, have at it. Okay, fine, fine, you've gotten the tires in, but you've forgotten about your entire Home Depot cart worth of other items, and there is no more room. Here's another ridiculous thing about the Pigeon Wing minivan. It only has 257 miles of range. Do you believe that? What kind of stupid car only goes 257 miles before it has to be refueled? What kind of idiot Tesla owners put up with such a ridiculous amount of range? That's so absurd. Only 257 miles? How is that even tolerable? What kind of stupid... So here's the thing. All those criticisms you've heard about this car, maybe some you've participated in, they're not entirely true, but that still leaves the ultimate question. What's it like to drive? Well, it's time to take it on the road and find out. Obviously, the first thing you notice when you get into this vehicle and just about any electric vehicle is that it doesn't make any noise, which is always a little bit unsettling for a little while, especially when you floor the accelerator. This thing's pretty quick and it's like, Now the Model X is especially good on the highway, I think, because it's of the autopilot and because it's so fast and it's, it's fairly substantial. It's a good highway cruiser. But I've started this test in the city because uh, driving around the Model X, I discovered what I think are its two biggest driving flaws. Uh, number one is the ride quality. It is pretty harsh. Now, with that said, this is a performance SUV, like a X5M or a Cayenne Turbo, and it rides about like those cars do. Now, the other demerit to me about the Model X's driving experience is you hear a lot of road noise and tire noise. Now, the funny thing about that, of course, is you don't hear any engine noise. So I think the road noise and tire noise are amplified because you're used to hearing those things drowned out a little bit by the engine. One thing that is very clear about the Model X though, here I'm on a highway on-ramp. <laughs> wow, it is so fast. This isn't even the performance model. This is just the regular 90D. It's not the high performance version. And it is tremendously quick, unbelievably fast. And of course, as everybody knows, electric vehicles have instant torque from the moment you put your foot down and oh boy, does it feel like that. In terms of handling, I find handling to be pretty impressive for a vehicle this size and this weight. However, steering is vague compared to any performance SUV competitor. One complaint that a lot of people have had about this car is the glass, which actually you can see is above my head. That's still the windshield. That's not a sunroof. People have complained about this. They said that it brings in too much heat, that they don't like it. These people are idiots. They're completely wrong. The windshield glass is awesome. You get this incredible panoramic view over the whole car. It's super, super cool. I wish all cars had it. Another crazy thing about the acceleration, we've just done, you know, zero to 60. Here's 70 plus, and it still kind of jolts you back in your seat. <laughs> now, one thing that's very cool, obviously, this car, like all the Model Xs, has autopilot. And so you put it into autopilot, and it does it for you. And I'm gonna cover more of this in my Quirks video. Obviously, it doesn't actually do what I suggested earlier in the video. The car's not a magnet. If you walk up to it, it won't like back up. But it does work really well on the highway. I've noticed there are a couple issues with autopilot. Yesterday, it tried to change lanes into a car, and maybe it would have stopped itself, but I wasn't ready to find out. It doesn't do red lights, it doesn't do stop signs, that sort of, sort of thing, which surprised me. But other than that, it's so cool. On the highway and in heavy traffic, autopilot is the greatest thing in the world because it just works 99.9% .9 of the time and it works well. With two holes of the cruise control stock, you feel like you've transported yourself deep into the future. It's awesome.
So my final conclusion, well, the Model X does have some flaws, but not really so much the ones I showed you before that people seem to get so mad about. First, there's the styling, and regardless of whether or not you personally like it, you have to admit it's been kind of polarizing ever since this car came out. Next, the fit and finish and interior materials aren't quite as good as most luxury brand rivals. Just look at how much wear this driver's seat has after only 8,400 miles traveled. It's also pretty easy to notice things like the misaligned trim and panels that don't quite fit right. But that's part of the price you pay for being an early adopter of a brand new car with a lot of brand new features. And then there's my biggest personal gripe, which is the roof rack situation. Now, because of these trick doors, you can't mount a roof rack on this thing. Instead, Tesla suggests that you try to do this. I personally find that laughable, and so will anyone who's ever actually used a roof rack. It's a bit like calling your landlord and telling him that your toilet's broken, and he says, hey, just use the sink. But in general, I think this thing is pretty cool. And I say that as someone who has made fun of Tesla and its cars and its obsessive owners and their stupid vanity plates in the past. Why is the Tesla Model X an awful car? It isn't. And you'd better get ready because this might just be the future.